Good afternoon. My name is Superintendent Christopher Flanagan of the Radnor Township Police. This is another Police Matters episode. I'm excited to introduce and talk about a very important topic today. Um, first, I'll introduce my guests. I have Police Officer Mark Bates and Health Officer Marie Carbonara. Welcome to the show. Thank you. Thank you. So I know that what a police officer does, we know what the health officer does, but you guys actually wear a different hat. You're wearing the shirts that um, talk about what other opportunities you give the citizens and uh, store owners of the township, and that is the ability to train in CPR, yes. AEDs, yes. and something new, stop the bleed training? Yes. Excellent. So the purpose of the show will be to just break that down, how to get this opportunity, how to have the chance to learn the techniques that we just went over, and then at the end, our instructors, who have to train very hard, will actually give us a very brief demonstration because we're going to emphasize that it's not as hard as you think. Is that a, that's a fair statement to make? It is definitely not hard. Perfect. So, Marie Carbonara, could you tell us, the residents, why should we do CPR? What, what is the reason that we're out here teaching this? Well, I guess the goal here is to increase the um, rate of survival in, in the case in the case of an, um, somebody becomes injured or has a, a serious um, medical event. Um, and, you know, how we can kind of help with that is to provide teaching to as many people as possible, especially, especially our residents. And then in CPR, the biggest thing is, what's the most important thing or what's the message that people should know? Why are you doing CPR? Well, we want to get we want to get the blood to the brain. So the most important part is compressions. So if you do anything at all, um, if an AED is not available or if 911 is on their way, you can always start compressions because we want to pump that blood and we want to keep the brain fresh and 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 working. Excellent, Mark. The AED is carried in each one of our police cars, correct? Correct. And they're now in many many buildings. Correct. We've in instituted them throughout all school district buildings and township buildings. Okay. And that goes hand in hand with the CPR that Marie was talking about? That is correct. Okay. Tell me about stop the bleed real quick. Tell me tell me what stop the bleed means because I don't think a lot of people know about it. What is the point of stop the bleed? Stop the bleed is a is a uh, continuation of the standard first aid that we teach and it prolongs the uh, use of tourniquets and quick clot remedies to pretty much stop the bleed, which our township already in the last six months has used once successfully for a resident. Okay. So if we add up CPR, we add up stop the bleed, we want people to know that you can actually have a major impact in people dying unnecessarily. Now people still may die if you have a cardiac arrest, is that correct? Correct. So even with the best intentions, it still may, but survival rates and success stories are huge related to CPR, is that correct? Yes. Okay, so these efforts are important and they're used every day, to your point, uh, right here in Radnor Township. Marie, who gets trained in, in the township on CPR, AD, and Stop the Bleed? Is it just the cops or is it, how do we do that? Uh, well, the, the police officers are all trained. Uh, our, our, all of our township staff are trained. Um, the Parks Department puts on a summer camp and all their staff is trained and, you know, as many people who are interested in the community. So, so it's safe to say, and do we have AEDs in the township buildings? We do. We actually um, just installed um, an AED on every floor in the township building as well as the um, Public Works building uh, down the road. Excellent. So I think it's safe to say that the residents should know that the township manager and the board of commissioners um, basically told us make it safe. They believe in the CPR mission, so even the staff, it doesn't just have to be emergency staff, have this training. And besides for that, the township wanted to give the residents and business owners as much of an opportunity to learn CPR as possible. So are you guys just training police officers and public works employees and township staff, or does it go outside of that? It goes outside to uh, daycare centers we've trained. We're training the Wayne Arts Center staff tomorrow, as a matter of fact, outside community members. Who, basically, anybody that asks, we're given the opportunity to be trained. All right, so that's so how would they go about getting a CPR class, stop the bleed class, or AED training? They can email, email myself directly at mbates at ranner.org or contact the township uh, records office in the police department and the 
uh, staff there will assist them in uh, registering and signing up for the next class. Okay, so we're going everywhere. I think you recently did a church. Are there more instructors, Marie, than just the two of you at the township? Yes, we have a total of four instructors. A total of four instructors. And this is portable. This stuff goes anywhere. So the classes were actually done on site. You guys have gone to the different locations. And I do want to stress that if you have a community group, we can get this training to you. This equipment is very portable. Um, one of the things I was going to just ask you guys to just talk a little bit about this equipment because I think it's important. Did we, Marie, did we recently get new equipment? Uh, yes, I'll talk a little bit about the one part of it. Um, so recently, I think it was the beginning of this year, um, the American Heart Association just up updated their regulations. And now they require um, us instructors to monitor in real time uh, the compressions that the students are doing, as well as the, the compression rate, as well as the depth. So these mannequins here um, are all equipped with a device on the inside. Um, it's Bluetooth, and it also has a uh, feedback device that you can also connect to it. And when the compressions are started, we will, you know, the instructors will see it on our phone or on this device if they are compressing at the appropriate uh, depth and also at the appropriate rate. So now, now we're really able to give very important feedback, which we did not have before. Um, and this new equipment is awesome. Could you show us the AED and the um, stop the bleed mannequin? The AED is a uh, real life. It, simulator where the instructor has a keypad where we can articulate different training scenarios to make it more real life uh, or real situational for the student. The um, stop the bleed tourniquet mannequin actually has different types of wounds that can uh, use their first aid techniques and apply the tourniquet in a real life situation and uh, give hands-on uh, training for how it would actually work out on the street. Well, this is this is actually extremely exciting to see this. So people are going to get the best training possible uh, with this new equipment. You guys are certified in this. How, how are you? How do you become an instructor? Uh, myself uh, in 2012, I went to Temple University, trained with the uh, training center out there, uh, certified by American Heart. Uh, and we had to uh, be monitored, training, uh, instructing at least two, if not four, up to four classes. And um, myself, after doing it for six years, then uh, Temple certified me to uh, teach other teachers. And through that course, uh, I monitored Marie after she completed the Temple training, uh, Sergeant McGuire and Officer Fisher. We're all uh, completed the same thing in the last three to four years. So we, we talked a lot about this equipment. We talked about you guys are certified instructors, so we're getting cutting edge information. But one of the things, if you could break this down, Marie, should somebody be intimidated by what they're seeing? How hard is this? What would be your message be to the audience? You mean as far as um, taking the class and completing the yeah, should, should requirements? Yeah, should I be afraid of what you guys are talking <laughs> about? Because it kind of seems intimidating a little bit when you see all of this, hear all the things that you guys did. How would you say the class feels and, and what people should expect? Yeah, I think I think um, the most important thing here is that we're not we're not asking people to save lives. We're just asking people to buy time so we can get these people where they need to go, whether it's the hospital or in the ambulance to the hospital. So a lot of all of this equipment is is really designed for all skill levels. So we want everybody to be able to see and touch everything, which is why we have this amazing equipment because they can interact with the equipment. They can they get feedback now right away. So it kind of helps put their mind at ease. We try to give them as much information as possible so everybody, by the time they leave the class, is, is as comfortable and, and is willing to help out in an emergency situation. And age range from 12 on up uses this stuff and takes the classes. So it's, it's really fun for the uh, students sometimes. So you guys see a lot of positive interaction because we're not too intense. It's a, it's, a, it's a friendly, open atmosphere to learn how to do these techniques. The nice thing about the mannequins, correct me if I'm wrong, you can practice a couple times. You guys as instructor build up the confidence uh, in the people so that they can buy that time that Marie had mentioned uh, to help save lives. Yes. Um, and it's not just CPR now. It's combining CPR 
AED and if they're bleeding or something else happens. So we're, we're pulling all the things that really end lives unnecessarily and getting it together. Yes. First aid from what we learned from we were in elementary school, middle school and everything now is broadened out to this. Um, is there any type of group that um, you wish would consider, you know, CPR training, that all the training we just talked about? Is there any kind of groups that you guys are targeting that we're trying to get to, or is it open to just anybody? It's open. I like the, uh, it's become more open, especially in our township with the uh, preschools and the daycare centers, the staff coming to us. Okay. All right. And and we're obviously lucky that we're close to some hospitals. So if you can do CPR for a couple of minutes till the police or the ambulance get there and we now get them to the hospital, those life saving professionals who do that and the volunteers, um, people's survival rates have a much better outcome. Um, and I think you being in charge of the program, we actually monitor what goes on and, and tell me if I'm correct, there are specific stories of people's lives being saved by early AD application yes. and proficient CPR. Yes, at least two in the past year in this township. So right by, here in Radnor? By uh, one of those by uh, school district staff that I personally trained. So th that's an amazing story and we'll share this with the audience, but one of our, um, two of our sergeants have actually had major heart attacks where CPR is performed. Um, they are on the job today because local people, not rescuers, not police, not uh, nurses, whatever, local people knew how to do CPR, use an AED, and it made a difference uh, in the outcome of these providers. So you guys who are watching this important program really have an opportunity to make a difference in this great community, but also wherever you go, if you're on vacation, because I think emergencies happen everywhere, 24-7. Yeah. Yes. And sometimes I think we would say, since we go on different things, that you don't really expect an emergency to happen, and you don't want to get caught not having this training. Is that is, was that a safe thing to say? I, I would definitely say that the last thing you want is the regret and not being able to do something for somebody you care about. At the end of a class, and you guys are both good motivators. You got a lot of high reward for you, but like at the end of a class, as instructors, I'll ask each of you, how do you feel? What's what's like one of the best stories that as a class has ended that you guys can think of? The the best story would be the say from the uh, school staff after teaching them probably uh, say three four months prior to the rescue and I was actually the first cop that showed up for the rescue and to watch watch those students that I trained months before actually on the street doing doing what they learned I think the um, most positive feedback that I've received was um, I had a I had a student say to me that they they really enjoyed the aspect of interacting and getting the chance to kind of work with the mannequin. In the past, they hadn't been able to do that, but they felt way more comfortable by the time we were finished with our class because they got plenty of practice time on the mannequin. It just it just made them feel so much better and more willing to help out. So I will tell you about our instructors, uh, ladies and gentlemen in the audience. They would never tell you this, but uh, Mark has received a life-saving award here at Radnor Township by using CPR and his skills. And uh, we got a, a very nice letter uh, about Marie where she taught a class and there was like, besides for learning CPR and doing things, it brought their group together. It brought the group together and they felt more of a team and they learned a little bit more about our township and how we do more than just our regular jobs. It, it's a community here. I know that the manager really wants us out there doing this, and the commissioners have supported all this uh, very important equipment. But it comes back to, are you ready to be prepared to save a life? I hope you are. Our instructors are friendly. They've broken down the class. It's easy to get through if you're willing to participate. Work hard. We have great equipment to, to get you that build up in confidence so that if there is an emergency, which I would say there's probably one gonna happen you know, sooner than later, that you'd be ready to help your loved one, most importantly, or a neighbor, a friend, or just a passerby. I'd like to thank our instructors for bringing out this equipment, for your dedication to saving lives here in the township, and um, to the future, because I think the goal would be, we'd love to say that everybody in Radnor Township is CPR certified. Yes. That, that would be a great goal. We're not there yet, and we have a long way to go, but I think we're striving to do things like that, and these building blocks are setting up um, 
for those success stories. And hopefully there'll be more in front of the commissioners' meetings of saves that are done by residents, um, as well as our dedicated police officers, fire company, and ambulance personnel as well. Yes. I'd like to thank the audience for watching us and paying attention on our CPR. We are actually going to give you a live demonstration by our instructors to show you that it is easy once you learn the simple techniques. Thank you for watching. Afternoon, folks. My name is Officer Bates of the Reiner Township Police Department. Just here to give you a real quick uh, simulation of what the mannequins would show you if you take our class for certification in first aid, CPR, and AED training. Basically, we have uh, mannequins that would help demonstrate how to pack wounds from cuts to uh, gunshot wounds, all kinds of uh, wounds that you would have. You pack it, if that doesn't work, we demonstrate and show you how to use a tourniquet and you can practice with this mannequin. The uh, CPR mannequins, we will show you how to use chest compressions, open an airway and give rescue breaths, using mouth to mouth, masks, also, we have the AED, which we would demonstrate, and we can uh, simulate rescue scenarios. You can practice putting on the pads, and with the simulator, it would be just as if you can see what the shock would be like, a simulated shock from the AED training device. Basically, the classes take approximately two hours to two and a half hours long, so it's not that long. And like I said, state-of-the-art training equipment to help you practice during the class. That would be all. Thank you for your time, and have a good day.